I air on my head is my antenna. There's a mystic is blowing through the wind. If you can listen, you will hear. Fire upon Babylon! Rastafarianism is one of the world's most recognized yet often misunderstood religions. It's an ethnic religion that developed in Jamaica during the 1930s and for ages I only thought of it as being all about reggae music and dreadlocks but its roots go way deeper than that. Unlike popular beliefs, being Rastafari is not synonymous with Jamaica. They live in a world of their own by their own principles and do not accept the values and lifestyle of the general Jamaican society. The gate is locked, so we have to we have to jump in. You will never come into a Rastafari space and see the colors of a Jamaican flag because Rastafari does not see ourselves as Jamaicans. Realizing how very little I knew about the depth of Rastafarianism, I decided to spend the next 24 hours living amongst them to learn firsthand from them and to try to truly understand this mysterious religion. <laughs> Montego Bay was my only starting point and beyond that I was at square one. I didn't know any Rastas personally so finding one to connect with that would open me up to this mysterious religion was my first mission. I searched online looking for clues for those who had visited the Rastas and I wanted to know what they were like and how the experience felt for them and most importantly what I was really getting myself into. Finding them turned out to be more challenging than I thought. You know, Rastas are rare and they just make up 1% of Jamaica's population. According to some research I found online, there are just about 31,000 Rastas in the whole of Jamaica. So I conducted some travel bodies for their takes on meeting Rastas and the feedback ranged from neutral to positive. Digging deeper and sifting through reviews, I discovered that Arab, a friend and a fellow YouTuber I bumped into in Montego Bay, was also curious about the Rastafarian lifestyle. Just currently at the beach and just ran into Arab, he's also a big YouTuber. This was a relief because I realized I wouldn't have to explore this religion alone. But the big puzzle still remains. How do I find a community of these people? My research further revealed that due to their rejection of mainstream lifestyle, the majority of Rastas live secluded in Rastafari indigenous village, which is like a sanctuary for Rastafari communities. And I realized this is where I needed to go. Luckily for me, the night before, I had come across a Rastafari guy while I was at the beach, who was a fan of my channel, and he agreed to take me to the Rasta village the next morning. His name is Ambesa, and he is also a Rasta himself. <laughs> we drove for a while through the busy streets of Montego Bay to the outskirts of the city. Eventually, the car ride ended and we proceeded on foot. So guys, today I'm going to be showing you the Rasta experience. We're going to be exploring the Rastafari religion and talking to the Rastas. What does that yeah, mean? What does that mean? Like Rasta means that they they smoke that green thing, right? You should ask him. Are you going to be participating today? I think so. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> our walk brought us to a shallow river where we had to remove our shoes to get across. Going through the portal right now. Cold water. I'm right. into the portal. Into the portal. The guys are walking into the portal. We're walking to figure out. No respect, bro. The afternoon, man. <laughs> Ooh, okay. My foot is already wet. <sighs> the struggle. How far is it? Probably another like three minute walk. Why do these guys live so deep into the Well, most of it is to tap in back with nature because as you know, Rastafari is all about living one with the earth and tapping back into that frequency. This is where we're meant to go to. <laughs> the gate is locked, so we have to we have to jump in. Ooh, ooh! We just broke into the Rasta's house. Ouch! Did I say traps? <laughs> oh, I almost fell down there. Finally, after hours on foot, I made it to the Rasta Ferry settlement, and it felt like I had stepped into another world. 
At the entrance to the portrait of Emperor Haile Selassie, whom they believed is the reincarnation of the supreme deity. Selassie is super important in Rastafari culture and all Rastas respect him. Some people even think of him as the second Jesus. As African people, there is no even discussion as it relates to the color of a god. But when you bring us into the container of the West, then that becomes an important issue. Because the only book that they gave to us was the Bible. And it is in that book we heard of Ethiopia. And, you know, certain chapters in the book spoke of a man that should be born in Ethiopia with crowning names as king of kings conquering land of a tribe of Judah. And the only person we knew that was ever a crown under these names was Emperor Haile Selassie I. So we, in searching for a godlike consciousness in Africa, in our own image, we declared Emperor Haile Selassie as our god. Haile Selassie is the king of kings, the conquering lion of Judah, elect of God, power of the Trinity. The term Rastafari comes from Selassie's original name, Rastafari Makunen, before he became the emperor of Ethiopia. Ras means a prince, and Tafari Makunen was his personal name. Next up, we met Queen Bee, an energetic member of the Rastafari indigenous village. In Rastafari culture, women are seen as partners to men, often called queen or empress. And Tayo? C-A? Tayo. Tayo. T-A-Y-O. What does that mean? It means joy. Like bringing joy to the world. You? Yeah. Come. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah? Yeah? Yes, I. What struck me most about her was her attire. Rasta women dress modestly, covering their heads and avoiding clothes that show the shape of their bodies. Is it possible to see your lock? No. <laughs> uh, okay. Can I see somebody else's own? Any of the guys? Of course. Yeah. Uh, don't they yeah. all have their locks out? Okay, so women don't open their locks? Or only specific occasions? No. It, like, for example, women especially when they're in their private quarters, quarters. at the time. Yeah. As I walked around the settlement, I noticed I was getting fewer interactions than usual on my trips because of how scarcely populated and remote they were. The total people in this village were less than 10. So I got curious about why they chose to live so far away from the city and why they were so few in number. Rastafari is this group of people that they could not remove nature from our DNA. Rastafari is a synonym to repatriation. The essence of Rastafari is to return to Africa, to return to our story, to return to our traditions, to return to who we are. Welcome to Rastafari indigenous village, Tayo. Okay, thank you. Rastafari Indigenous Village is a pathway to Africa. We are here on this piece of land owned by the Nelsons for a period of time. We are practicing how we are going to live when we return to the motherland. So guys, we need to pull off our shoes so we can get grounded with the earth. Uh, this is the second shoe. This is actually wet. <laughs> This is judgment fire? Why is it called judgment fire? Because it's a fire that is responsible for burning Babylon. Babylon is the evil, corrupted system of this world. So like the sins, the, the bad things people do? That's yes, Babylon? That is or is it the bad people that is Babylon? The bad people is Babylon, yeah. but the system that created the people, mm. that is what we are burning, that fire. So more time, Rastafari will always say, Fire Palm Babylon. Fire Palm Babylon. Fire Palm Babylon. Fire Palm Babylon. Okay, Fire yeah, Palm Babylon. Yeah, but you can't sound like European when you say it. Okay. You have to kind of find with accent. Okay, Fire yeah. Palm Babylon. Is that good? Turn off it here. Fire Palm Babylon. <laughs> turn, turn off it here. Fire Palm Babylon. Fire Palm Babylon. Fire Palm Babylon. Fire Palm Babylon. Yes, sir. Fire upon Babylon. Oh, uh, yeah, that'll get warm up. Come again, next one. Fire upon Babylon. Bro, uh, in front of you is a demon and you're casting him out. Where is he? Fire upon Babylon. 
Let me see. You I get it. Do it. Now you yeah, make Arab sons. Fire bomb Babylon! <laughs> Are you looking for Babylon? Fire bomb Babylon! <laughs> 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 Are you Babylon? <laughs> I think it's dead. <laughs> wow, it's dead. <laughs> In the Rastafari, I believe everything holds a deeper meaning. They see their history of slavery and current challenges like economic instability and racial discrimination, which they call damn question, as tests from Jah. And after the multiple tests over the last decade, there is no better testament to their resilience than their dreadlocks. It is a symbol of African identity, strength, and defiance. The locks for me is, you know, the identity. When you see the locks, you see, you know, that this is the defiance of Rastafari. It means that you're taking an oath that you know, you're gonna stand for rights and you're gonna stand for yourself. This is what, because when Rasta started growing their hair back in the time, it was to show that, you know, we're not gonna join your side. This is this is where we believe in what we believe in. Your locks is just an acceptance of self, you know. Culture is that dictate that you should shave. Is somebody else decide that you should shave because that is their perception of what they call looking good, however. If you weren't following that line of reasoning, this is how you would naturally look. Yeah. And if you can't be comfortable with how you naturally look, then I don't know how the mind reasoning there. You know. <laughs> Everybody here wears dreadlocks, which follows their Rastafari spiritual practice. They view their hair as a source of power that shouldn't be cut. My ear on my head is my antenna because there's a mystic is blowing through the wind. Mm -hmm. And if you can listen, you will hear. And if you can feel, you will feel it. I am someone, if you do something, I don't saw you when you do it. But as I saw you, I know. You say, say something bad about me. I wasn't there, but as I saw you, I know. So I can feel that vibration of energy, but you got to be clean and true within yourself. And the universe, you are everything to you. In the middle of this experience, I had to stop and think about what I was genuinely seeking with this video. Travel for me is always a way to grasp different perspectives. And coming from a Christian background in Nigeria, much of what Rastafari I cherish will typically be frowned upon back home. The dreadlocks, the music, and some of its content, but especially... Plant is a very profound teacher. It opens our mind instead of alters our mind. It gives us this idea that we can also be sovereign in relationship with nature. In recognizing that human beings and governments only wanted their thoughts and their idea of how we should live to be the primary idea that we use. But with plants, you're able to redirect your thoughts. You were able to be accountable to nature and not just the man. And that's why the main reason why us as Rastafari are connected to and other visionary plants around the world that indigenous people use. I was someone who really I could not see much. My eyes them were running, just keep running. I can't look into no sunlight. My mom came to take me to the doctor over and over and over and they can't do nothing about it. So a doctor came from Africa. My mom took me to him and he told me, he didn't tell my mom, but he told me that I should get a little jaw up. I started to do that when I was seven years old. And from there on, all the things that come out of my eyes, everything dried up. I can look into any sunlight right now. I don't wear glasses. So this, no one can tell me to stop using herbs. People discriminate, but not for me. It is good for some, but if you can manage it, you leave it alone. Hmm. It is not for everyone. So do you grow your own? Sometimes. We don't have any in our village, you know, but we have other family, you know, who plant herb. But I don't, I get it. Since the legalization of in 2015, folks in Jamaica can grow up to five plants without getting in trouble. However, five plants aren't enough for selling, so the Rastas grow theirs in hidden spots. So if you see Addis Ababa. Addis Ababa, yeah. 
farm and you can see all the strains here. Ooh. <laughs> what are the health benefits of? Well, you know, my brethren, um, in the Rastafari community, we have been um, relating to this plant for just wellness. You mm. know, we find it to be a member of a, you know, a very um, small sect of plants that are spiritual in mm -hmm. their nature. Yeah. Because they afford humans a particular type of reasoning when we have a relationship with this particular plant. It is a soap made from... We do this mostly at events where we cut the soaps and we weigh them. This is a slice and we sell them by the ounce. Let me see how much this weighs you now. Mm, 2.4 ounces. Mm. So how do the Rastafari, how do they make money to survive? So this is one way, okay. way of sustaining ourselves while we are promoting the culture. So each individual here in this village, it is their own business. King Toto, the drum maker, that's his business. I'm the soap maker, that's my business. King Tiba, who is the artist, that's his business. You'll also meet the family, Chai family, where they make seed jewelry. Okay, so every, every, everybody just has a skill that they use yes, to make money? Yes, that they use in particular. Vasafaya believe champions the idea that everyone should run their own business in order to maintain creative control over their work, be it artistic or scientific. This approach is deeply rooted in the desire to work in ways that fulfill personal happiness and contribute positively to their lives. These are sweets up and sour sap. These are fruits. So these are necklaces. Over here, we have the lignum vitae, it's the same thing that I'm wearing right here. Oh. And this comes from the tree of life called the national, it's a national flowers tree. Mm. And then we have the blue maho, which is a national lumber tree as well. And these are made by me and my my daughter. Okay, so is this how money is made in terms of like... This selling? is how I take care of myself, my family, and even help to share with the community as well, you know. Restrictions common in traditional jobs such as wearing uniforms, shaving, or adhering to specific codes of conduct clash with the Rastafarian values. Consequently, you never find the Rastafarian in the police or military. Instead, they gravitate towards jobs that allow for a more personal expression like music and tailoring. Many Rastas even become farmers to avoid going to supermarkets and risk exposing themselves. They rely heavily on bartering and goodwill as a form of payment for goods and services. What's that? What's that? What's that drink? Rump roof. Rump roof. Rump roof. It is not bitter. No, it smells sweet. It smells like an apple. What does it do? No does... alcohol. He's what? saying it cleans your system. Oh. And rebuild. If you, you take it every other day. Oh. I'm 70 years old, but I'm still in prime. <laughs> yeah. The name rump roof. The ramping means playing. And rough is like rump rough. So it's basically like a, like they would say, it's like a sexual aphrodisiac. Then. You know why I gave it the name rump rough? Why? A friend of mine came here one time and told me that he needs some roots from me. And I gave him some. And a couple of days after that, I saw his wife came here to me. <laughs> I said, let me tell you something. Do not give my husband any more roots when he came here. And I laugh, and I scratch my head, and I say to her, "Oh, he's rumping rough," <laughs> and he get very hungry. <laughs> so from there on, I gave I gave him a rump rough. So how much of this you gonna need? Uh, right now, one bottle. Okay. Yeah, I'm buying. <laughs> yeah, I'm buying, bro. <laughs> why, wait, wait, first of all, before you buy, why are you buying? Why are you buying? Why are you buying this? I mean, I read all the the things. It says it cleanses your blood. It uh, it, it's good for your immune system. It makes you absolutely rock hard, and you have the best love making session of your life. Kids, help with kids production. Kids production. <laughs> I'm 
I'm coming out of this with a baby. <laughs> it's gonna be a Jamaican baby. <laughs> Is it gonna put me to sleep or do I try right now? You can't taste it, you can't taste it man. This is my first time trying. Okay. A cork's the whole thing. Yeah. You can't taste it. Oh my god, I just wasted like 12 cents. <laughs> this is okay. my first time doing this, yeah? I'm gonna try it out. I'm your guinea pig. Ram prof. <laughs> Gonna be rock hard in some seconds. Sad Bend videos. over. <laughs> All of these are made craft items that so this is Calabash as well. See my name on their ambassador. These are some of the artwork that they do and everything is done handmade here. So they made it themselves. They constructed the building themselves. So this is what I eat from. If I go to an ital spot or as they would say, we don't we say ital, we don't say vegan. Mm. A vegan is like a you know first word. So ital is anything natural. Mm. It's from I. So anything I and when we say I and I it means everyone i and i so this is the ital bowl and this is my dish i've had this what four years i wash it keep it clean i keep it in my truck bring it in my bag so if i'm eating out i don't have to use no plastics or anything i just even throw my drink in there and drink it mm. yeah man so Redlocks and reggae are what many people think of when it comes to Rastafari. But their way of living is a big part of their beliefs and not many people know this. They are all about being natural and not just with food but other areas of their life. Rastafari is trying to go everything organic, you know, we're trying not to waste and break down. We have to take away to build again, that makes no sense. If we have to take away these trees, we have to plant them, replant them. Hmm. It's not a space where, you know, you come and you come to destroy everything and then not replace it. Cause that's why the, the earth is fighting back right now because it's like you know you're taking from us and we're not getting back anything you know everything is a cycle so if you take away you have to put back thank you got some coconut <laughs> yeah that's good huh this was this is needed cheers yeah, I'm already done. Mine's no, finished. Still fine. Still fine. Cheers. Ten seconds. Mine's finished. Rastafari don't cheers. say cheers. Okay. We are mm. all kings and queens and emperors, so we say thrones. 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 So you do thrones. Yeah. Thrones. 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 Yes. <laughs> you go into the mountain. You have this to go. Good. On. Oh, you good? You want another one? Ah, this is good, man. Uh, uh, this is for him, though. So. <laughs> you can get the jelly out of it. So you can get the the the, the, the flesh. You can get the flesh out for you. The food. The food. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be great actually. So guys, something I just recently learned is you can use coconut to eat coconut. <laughs> so you peel out the back and then you scoop this like this. And then this is how they eat it here in the Rasta village. Mm. Everything natural. Welcome to our tabernacle. This is a place where we come to give thanks and praise. This is a space where we come to regroup. It's a space where we come to find forward. This is a music that all the groups of Rastafari play. This incredible journey, I joined Queen Bee to cook up a pot of Itao stew. Food has a power to bridge cultures and offer a taste of tradition and shared understanding, and I was all in for this. So we have here the ingredients for cooking an Itao stew. And an Itao stew is one of the most popular meals among Rastafari. There is carrot, sweet potatoes, and these are the seasoned vegetables. 
It's a combination of veggies, herbs, and spices, all simmered in coconut milk. It's completely vegan and absolutely no meat is included. I heard Rastafarians don't eat meat. What's the reason behind that? Not eating meat is for the container of the West. Many vaccines have rose up to eliminate the issues that the West have brought to the earth. Not eating meat is one such vaccine that Rastafari comes with. The world then followed and came with vegan. But the idea is that this type of industrial farming, having cows on so much property that could be used for crops, burning out the ozone layer with all the fumes that comes from the cows, from the chickens, all of that, we feel that it's a divine intervention, idol food. And not eating meat in the West is because there's no meat in the West. There's almost no real food in the West. So the idea of our food is what is natural. So people eating meat in original places like the East and so on are in a direct relationship with nature. I would not go to an African person and tell them that they should not eat meat because they are probably eating real something that is natural. But in this container called the West, there's no real meat. Okay, here is your food that you have prepared. Thank you. So guys, we just got our meal that we prepared. He played a small part in preparing it, but no credit to him though, by the way, even though it tastes nice. He's, so this is the ice house too. What do you want to say? He's been having me sit here, stare at food for the last two hours. I've been hungry. <laughs> Sorry. He's finally flipped the script. Patience is he key. He feeds me. Patience is key. key. How do you mean I feed you? <laughs> <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Throne. Throne. Yes, Throne. Give us his. Let's try out the food. Okay. I thought it's... Oh. Mm hmm. Bro, that is so. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. It's... Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm. Where is it for? Man, this is good, man. It's just melting in my mouth. Right? Yeah. It's way better than, like, you would think. Mm hmm. I want to try out the acum. This is very popular in Jamaica, yeah? Mm hmm. I think of everything, this is my best part. The stew. Right the ital stew. Mm hmm. If you were to eat, you could eat like this. If this was the way to ital, you could give up the meat. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Meat? Oh, so there's a man over there. No KFC anymore? I could eat a lot of this. I don't eat much KFC. No jerk chicken? This is better than jerk chicken. Oh, where's the bird? Where's it? <laughs> After 24 hours here, the Rastafarians have taught me that the real treasures in life are in material, but found in our relationships, community, and harmony with nature. They created an heaven for themselves where love and togetherness reign supreme, showing me that happiness isn't all about owning the latest gadgets or flaunting wealth. It's about being true to oneself and living in sync with the planet. From your own perspective, what do you feel is the secret to happiness? Well, it's more you have to... Um find that within yourself mm. because sometimes you're in an environment that is not good or sometimes things pop up you know little violent here and there and thing but you have to find peace within yourself mm. yeah man just to stay calm and project good thoughts and do the right thing at all times I'm super thankful to them for giving me this opportunity to see such a unique part of their culture that is rarely seen online. I went on this journey to learn more about the Rastafari, but I came out with more questions about myself. What I got out of my time with the Rastafari wasn't necessarily the words they spoke, but their view on life. My life philosophy is living as one. As I said, my thing is unity. Unity means oneness. So I believe in the connective unity. That's what Haile Selassie teached us mm. that if we as, as one, as a people, not saying black, white, everybody, if you're a purple person, if you're a green person, we accept you as one because we are all in one air. We're breathing the same air. We're experiencing this whole experience together. And all I want for this earth is to have oneness. I know that's what Rastafari means to me. Rastafari yeah. is a verb. Okay. It's an attitude and behavior. Mm. You know, it's not something that you, you only say, it's something that you do. Mm. It's how you live, your relationship with life, mm. the plants, the animals, your sisters and brothers. With me, yeah. Rastafari is not a religion. Rastafari is a way of life. Spending 24 hours with the Rastas and learning about their way of life has helped give me a deeper understanding of my connection with others and the Earth. And these learnings will stay with me forever. 
please take care of yourself, take care of each other, take care of the environment. Don't heat the animal, don't kill the birds or the fishes or anything. Everything deserves their lives and you deserve yours, you know? So let us live in harmony and in peace. Shout out to Ambassador. Yes, sir. For taking us on this amazing experience. He's the one that took me and introduced me to the village. So if you guys ever want to come to Jamaica and experience this, hit him yes, up. Sir. The reason I'm sounding like this is because I'm literally walking on pebbles with my ah. dear. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was another amazing experience and an amazing story. If you haven't subscribed, definitely hit the subscribe button. We're trying to get to 1 million subscribers before the end of the year. And as always, hit the like button. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. <laughs>